Hello everyone, this is Ben, and what we're going to talk about in this particular video is the question of Jesus and whether or not Jesus even existed at all. Now, the reason why we're talking about it is uh, someone I know brought it up um, in kind of a weird way, a male that I know. Um, not a female, a male, and uh, but I guess it's helpful to talk about it. Maybe maybe we should talk about it every once in a while. It's one of those things that seems kind of dumb to talk about. It'd be much more interesting for me to give you evidence that Jesus rose from the dead. And if I start giving you evidence that Jesus existed, then it's it's such a powerful case for the existence of Jesus that it's just kind of boring thing to prove but you know we, we'll go through it because apparently people take that seriously I don't know like so the the reason why this is an issue is historically speaking as far as the historical evidence goes as far as how we how there is a science and, and a, more of like a philosophy a sort of a logic and a science because those two always intertwine of how we know things to be true about history or at least to have some level of certainty the bottom line is it's it's more likely that Jesus rose from the dead than that he didn't now the only counter response you can make to that is you can say well miracles are just always super unlikely that's what a miracle is and then you have to say, well, okay, we, we debate the the question of whether or not miracles are unlikely, and it becomes this sort of theological question about the supernatural and how unlikely it would be. But when you're talking about whether or not Jesus just existed, well, then all you're doing is just saying, you know, did this guy exist? <laughs> yeah. Of like, he's just a guy, you know, because he's just a guy, it's not exactly miraculous for there to be some dude you know, um, now bear in mind that if you say Jesus existed, you, you don't just mean just some guy who, you know, was named Jesus, um, but you mean literally like a guy who fits the bill at least to some degree. Maybe he didn't perform miracles or resurrect from the dead, but at least there was some sort of teacher in Galilee that's clearly the same guy who, you know, at least he was crucified, you know, by the Romans, and he lived at the right time in the right place, and the yada yada, and the blah blah blah. Um, chocolate milk gone. We will switch to the water. All right. So, to talk about the evidence, as far as we're just going to talk about historical evidence in this video, um, because the case is pretty powerful for the existence of Jesus. Um. But understand that historical evidence isn't the only way you prove things. Uh, there's, for example, in science you do experimental evidence. In logic you would do uh, rational proof or logical proof like or, or mathematical proof. Um, so, for example, for the existence of God, you would, you would start with, you know, does reality exist? What is the nature of reality? You know, in other words, it's a stupid question to ask, why can't I see an all-powerful being who exists in all places and times at the same time. Like, the, the God, if God existed, he would be the fa the fabric of reality itself. So the question would be a philosophical, logical one: What is the nature of reality? Is it a being or is it just a thing? Um, when it comes to the existence of Jesus, I think it will suffice for us to talk about uh, historical evidence. You know, did this guy exist? So the first thing we need to talk about is. Well, how do you know anything from history? I mean, it, maybe it's, maybe, how, how do we know anything that happened in the past? Maybe, you know, whatever we're told is made up. So how do we know the American Revolution happened? How do we know the Civil War happened? All right, so the way I like to explain this is, uh, and it works well with teenagers, is just to ask them, Your Bible, you have a Bible, everyone has a copy of the Bible, most most homes have more than one. The Bible is the only book you can sell to somebody who already has a copy. You know, you're, you're not going to own two copies of To Kill a Mockingbird 
or the Odyssey, but you'll own like more than one copy of the Bible. <laughs> um, so everybody's got a Bible, and so let's just say, for the sake of argument, just for us to understand this, that like let's say that the Bible was just a made-up book, and it didn't exist before 1970. That in 1970 they made it up. Okay, well that would be, that would be, think about like every single person watching this video right now has like some older person that they know very well probably a relative like a grandparent or even a parent that has a high level of credibility to them you know who would uh, verify the existence of the Bible before 1970 or you know for some for young people watching this you were born after like 1990 you know I, I use 1970 because I was born in 1981 so I think of all the people I you know grew up around the adults I grew up around you know I wasn't there in 1970 but they were well you could just say 1990 with it you know for some of you young people out there you could say like did the Bible exist in 1990 um well you know I was there you know, um, a lot of people were there. You know, I remember reading the Bible in the 80s, you know. Um, so if it didn't exist before 1990, there's no way I could have read it. All right. So anyway, but the question, the question for you, you know, young people is like, maybe I'm lying. And maybe all of your parents are lying. Well, think about how many parents would have to be in on that scam. Okay. A lot of them. And so... If you understand that, then you understand it's one of the basic concepts of historiography. Okay. And so it's a philosophical concept. So yeah, at the core of everything, anything we know is going to be something philosophical. But the simple concept is that if people independently make up a lie, independently come up with a fake story, that they will come up with unique stories. In other words, if you have independent sources for a story, and, and the story is not true, and they're all liars, but they're independent of each other, then that means that the stories won't be the same. Okay, and so that's the issue with the, with the existence of the Bible, and with the fact that you know the Bible and Christianity, and you know all the churches and everything, and the history, and all the popes and the yadas, you know that it existed before 1990. <laughs> Um, it's pretty strong. You have, all of us have tons and tons of numerous independent sources. So, like, if it was a conspiracy, that's the only, you know, the conspiracy explanation would be that, like, instead of having multiple independent sources, everyone got together and agreed on what the, their, got their story straight and, like, had a secret handshake and everything about the, the club meetings where they're going to make up the Bible in 1990. You know, even me, I was even there, you know. Was like I, I didn't really read it in, 19, in the 80s. I didn't go to church in the 80s. It was I didn't fall asleep in church in the 80s. <laughs> um, I didn't go to VBS and just eat popsicles. That's all I did at VBS in the 80s. That's all I remember. I was I was young, but anyway. So uh, you know I, we're all in on the secret handshake. You would see that like the secret cabal of the conspiracy is just incredibly unlikely. It's more likely that the Bible just existed. And that's why we have multiple independent sources that agree. So that's a basic concept in history is like if you have multiple independent sources that all agree, then you know that you know you, you, you can have you can say it's more likely that this you know that this actually happened versus you know this historical person existed or this story about history where this guy was here and did these things, that it's more likely that it happened than that it didn't. Now, now the the only way, you know, and it's, it doesn't mean that it's impossible. The, 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 the mega conspiracy is possible. But it kind of boils down to, like, well, how many sources do I have? You know, and, and, and are they independent? So, like, if one guy is just not really a source, if he's just copying from another guy, then he's not really a source. Um, of course, if one guy... You could have a source that's like, well, I went and interviewed multiple people. Then that's really a source that's providing you going back to like multiple sources. Um, all right, but he's a source. You know, he he tells you what the eyewitnesses said. So I mean, you get how it works. Like, well, maybe he's making it up, but 
you know, if you have another guy over here, another independent source, another independent source, and another independent source, and another independent source, and this guy interviewed four eyewitnesses, and they all, everyone's all saying the same thing, you start to build a case that, like, this actually happened. Um, the one way you can get around the, the, uh, the issue of the conspiracy problem, the, the, the fact that conspiracies are irrational, the bigger they are, is that, uh, you can is with the legendary explanation. That's the one way you can get around it. Is you can say, okay, none of our sources are close to the actual time of the event. So like, you know, this thing happened in the past, and there's only one source for it. There's only one guy who who said, did y'all see that? I, I that happened, and he goes and tells a bunch of people, and none of them were there, and then slowly over time who the original source is is forgotten and we don't have the original source we have like 400 years later four guys write a story about what happened but really it all comes from that one guy and well that one guy could have made it up okay he could say that happened i'm only one saw it but that, that you know that happened and it's like joseph smith or muhammad they they fall into that category because they were the only ones who saw anything so they're the only source for anything, um, Muhammad, you know, saw his visions, and the, the angel spoke to him, and uh, Joseph Smith had the same deal. Um, they don't have multiple witnesses for anything; um, they just the one witness. Whereas Jesus, it's a little bit different situation because we're talking about a public figure, you know, supposedly um, a guy who was going around, you know, in it, being a public figure. So anyway. And you can you can use Joseph Smith or Muhammad as a, an example. Joseph Smith living in the early 1800s, nobody doubts that he existed, but the the stuff that only he saw, the supernatural stuff, we say only Joseph saw that, you know. Um, so you you get the idea. Multiple independent sources, and then they need to go back close to the time of the writing. So like, when it comes to mythology, like you know Hercules or I can't think of anyone. Belepharon, the guy who rode the winged horse, um, and who were the who were the ones who with the the wings? Or you can go to like uh, the Enuma Elish. I forgot who the guy was in the Enuma Elish, but Gilgamesh, yeah. So and you got these stories. Um, the thing about those stories is the sources we have don't go back very close to the time then the actual event would have theoretically taken place. It's much later so that creates a legendary problem that because uh, if your sources are late then you don't really have multiple independent sources you might have one guy who made up the story and then 400 years later you've got four different people who wrote the story down like it happened but like they didn't really in other words they weren't making up the story and just and, and you don't have to, you know, in other words, it's a way around the problem of saying that multiple people aren't going to make up the same story. But if they didn't make it up, if it's just a legend that's been handed down over centuries, then they're not making up the story. And that would explain why all the, all the stories agree, because really it goes back to a common source way far back. So that's what we want to look for when it comes to anyone in history, whether it's the existence of Abraham Lincoln, Joseph Smith, Adolf Hitler, anything. You want multiple independent sources that are close to the time of the actual event. So that's that's what you're looking for in history, and that's why you're looking for that. So with those tools, you can actually just go do this yourself. Um, you don't need me to say anything else because you've got Google, and the problem sometimes with looking stuff up online is people don't know what to look for. Well, I've given you what to look for. Um, when it comes to the existence of Jesus, what we have to do is we have to say, all right, what do we have? Well, we've got the New Testament. The New Testament, you know, purports to be an ancient historical document that records the life of Jesus. Not just the four Gospels, not just Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but the later New Testament books also record many things about this guy Jesus and talk a lot about his life. So, you know, they give more commentary, but they also give us just information about this guy, Jesus, and there's a lot of details in there. And then, so the question is like, well, well, where did that come from? 
you know, maybe one guy like made all that up, right? Um, how did we get the New Testament, you know, that, that later portion of the Bible? Well, the thing is, we got it from the numerous separate different authors, okay? So, that's how we got it. There, you know, there were the, the apostles of Jesus who lived with Jesus, who walked with Jesus, wrote things down and told us what happened. And you say, well, okay, maybe that's made up. Maybe the existence of the apostles and the various eyewitnesses, and then, you know, Luke wasn't an apostle, for example, but he interviewed various eyewitnesses. And then he was an eyewitness in the book of Acts to the life of the apostles. So you could say, like, well, maybe, maybe these guys, maybe these apostles, maybe, you know, they all made it up. Well, then you've got a problem. The apostles, the problem with saying that the apostles were all fakers and they, and they, they made up Jesus, it, it, it's a bigger problem for them to say, like, we made up the existence of Jesus and we want to start a religion around a made-up guy. I mean, like, it's one thing for them to say, like, that he came back from the dead, for them to make up that he came back, you know, for his whole life to happen, and they say, like, oh, yeah, he... He, he didn't really come back from the, you know, he, he, he came back from the dead. He came back from the dead, everybody. That's one thing to say that. But to say that, like, they just to make up a, a person and build a religion around an imaginary person that you made up, that you claim you knew, and, like, he's from, like, from where you're from. I mean, it, it, gets, it gets more extreme. The real problem for saying that the apostles made it up is uh, the way that they lived their lives. They, they clearly, they believed it. Because they were willing to put their lives on the line constantly for it. They didn't just die for what they believed. They, they died all the time. They, in other words, they, they were, their lives were constantly threatened for this belief. Um, and so you could say, well, like... Does being willing to die for something mean that you believe it to be true? That you believe in it on some level? Well, they would have to, on some level, really believe in it. Um, so... The the argument you can make is you could say like, well maybe they were you know they were just fanatical faithful people, you know true true believers who got confused somehow. The problem there is they were eyewitnesses, so they would have had to have known that they were making it up, and so that's a major problem. So they're not like suicide bombers like this suicide bombing that happened in uh Egypt the other day was awful. It has been a few weeks, but like that's someone who, you know, was just believing what they're told and just really believed it because they're believing what they were told about Muhammad who lived one thousand four hundred years ago. Whereas the apostles would have they're they're talking about, you know, this guy Jesus that they literally, you know, knew. Like there's like their age. Some of them were older than him, some of them were younger than him. Like, this, why would they, 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 they there's no way, they, they would have known for sure that it wasn't true, if in fact it wasn't true. So they would have had to have been crazy, or super, super evil, you know, liars. Okay, so, that, that that's really the question that comes about, like, you know, were they crazy? Well, first of all, I mean, if they're crazy, their stories wouldn't have been the same. They would have acted more crazy. I mean, crazy people don't all they're not all on the same page. <laughs> um the other thing is you could say, well, like they're super deceitful. They're super maliciously evil on some level. This is like these people are horribly evil. And the problem there is you look at what they preach, like they preach nothing but the purest form of morality and, 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 and virtuous living you have ever seen to forgive others. You know, they preach Christianity. Christianity is the highest moral good. They preach love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. You know, so you could say like, if it was a play for power, you know, like, when exactly were they going to, you know, turn the switch on this thing? Like, they would have had to have done a complete 180. I mean, they preached, obey the government, follow Christ, They were and be willing to die for Christ. 
and don't keep what you believe a secret because you're willing to die for it. So, like, you can say, like, well, like, you know, they knew that, like, they would get political power. Well, they didn't. And it, the, the Christian church didn't get political power for centuries. So they were clearly willing to die for this. And they died all the time. They constantly faced death all the time. And these weren't people, like in Paul's case, we're talking about a guy who had political power and gave it up. You know, and these people, all of these guys had regular lives. It wasn't like, you know, this was a better deal for them. Um, so it, it's crazy. It's a it's a crazy move for them to think that like they would have had to have believe in something incredible. Um, and you see the religion that they preached, you know, was the purest the purest form of morality you've ever heard of. So if they were working, you know, for the side of evil for the devil or something, you know, and they were just making it up, then they they sure did a bad job of it because they never corrupted anyone. <laughs> Um, anyway, let's keep going. Uh, so the, the question that arises is like, okay, well, maybe the apostles are imaginary. And so then, you know, that's the problem you run into is like, well, now you're talking about multiple people being imaginary, you know, or, or that their lives didn't, weren't really, you know, the, the virtuous type lives that, that, uh, that, that, that they lived. So uh, then, now you're you're talking about hundreds of churches scattered all over the Roman Empire, all with stories about you know. So you're starting to get multiple, multiple, multiple independent sources about the exi you know by the existence of these apostles, and you're going to run to the conspiracy problem. It's it's going to be a gigantic conspiracy. This huge religion got started, and it definitely got started. So I mean, it really. At the crux of it is the lives of the apostles. And if you want to say that they were all scammers, like, at what point are you going to ever, like, not say that someone's a scammer? I mean, honestly, like, what more could they possibly do to prove to you that they weren't scammers? I mean, they went to their death for what they believed in. So, like, um, the only way around all this is you could say, like, well, the existence of the apostles, the existence of Jesus, you know, all of that was... You know that was you know that stuff was modified later on down the line. Well, in this case, we've got you know physical evidence, not just historical evidence. Uh, there are numerous copies of the New Testament that you know don't vary in the form that you have it today. And the copies we have today, there there's something like all the copies we have scanning from the time when the printing press was invented to all the way back to I think the oldest the oldest copy dates to 125 AD. So remember that Jesus would have ascended in 33 AD ish. So that's 100 years after the time of Jesus, you've got a copy. This is not an original of of any book of the New Testament. It's a copy of the book of John. And which means that the original has to be written earlier, and there, that's that's the issue. And the copy was found all the, it was found in another country from where the events happened. So, a copy made its way all the way down to Egypt by by 125 A.D. And remember that. I mean, it's not like the apostles wrote the Bible down in 33 A.D. when Jesus ascended. They they never it was never claimed that way. In many cases, they were writing closer to when they died, and uh, the historical accounts tell us that they, you know, when they died. So that's what you're looking for. If you want to dispute what I'm talking about, you what you want to do is you want to go look at the actual data, the actual evidence. Like what accounts do we have? What's there? And how early is it? Um, most historians agree that First Corinthians was, was written. At about 55 AD, and that's not really a debated or contentious thing. So I mean, it, that kind of ruins the whole legendary thing. And the issue is, is that First Corinthians 15 has a basic message about the resurrection and about who is witnesses to the resurrection. So like, it's kind of ridiculous for people to say like, oh, you know, uh, Jesus never existed, and and. 
fail to realize, like, well, why didn't anybody say that back then, back in 55 AD when 1 Corinthians was written? Um, and it talks about these eyewitnesses, and the understanding in 1 Corinthians is like, if you don't believe me, you go talk to them. Because uh, he, he, he makes a point, he says, many of whom, he says, many of whom are still alive. So, uh, you can't really date that later, 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 you know, um, unless you want to find the face of, you know, all the scholars who do, you know, who do all that. And it, the problem is, is you've got a, a reference to the resurrection and what the theological significance of the re resurrection there from Paul. And you don't have a Jesus who resurrects without a Jesus who's crucified. Beyond all of that, you've got contemporary... Roman historians who hated Christians and didn't believe in Christianity and didn't believe in the resurrection, they still believed that Jesus existed and that he, he was crucified. Like, no one doubted that at the time. There's so, I mean, it's too, there's multiple ones. I don't want to go through all of them. You can look them up. I mean, one of the most famous ones is Josephus. One of the ones I've heard about recently is Tacitus. But I think there's another one. But the important thing to understand is, like, these guys weren't Christians they didn't believe in Christianity, but they still believed that Jesus existed. So, like, if they wanted to criticize Christianity or debunk it, all they had to do was say that, like, Jesus didn't exist. Um, but that that really, in their day, that wasn't an issue for debate. And so that's important. Um, so anyway, there you have it. I mean, the, the question of Jesus' existence is not really interesting. The question is, did he resurrect from the dead? And you see, there's evidence for that, too. And what's interesting to me is how people want to raise the bar when it comes to the existence of Jesus. But if it's like some other guy from history, they're like, they're perfectly fine believing in him. Um, the real question is, did Jesus come back from the dead? And there's evidence for that. And I love how people like to say, well, you know, if you bring in Christian sources, then they're biased and you can't trust them. But the question is, biased by what? What 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 led them to believe in Christianity? Why did why do they believe in it? I mean, clearly, if they're Christians, they believe in Christianity. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous for me to give you, a, especially a source for the resurrection, that's not a Christian. You know, how, how that if you would say you don't accept Christian sources for the resurrection, then what on earth sort of sources? There are no non-Christian people who you know believe in the resurrection. Uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway. There you have it. It's not ridiculous to believe that Jesus existed. Uh, there's tons of historical evidence that he did. Okay, you don't. You typically don't start religions off completely made up people. Uh, I hope this video made some sort of sense. Thank you for your time.